launched fresh artillery strikes against Syria. It had earlier fired on the war-torn state in retaliation to the shelling coming from the Syrian side, which killed five Turkish civilians. Several Syrians were also reported dead as a result of the unprecedented military exchange. And RT's Middle East correspondent Paul Asliyeh joined us now live with more. Hello, Paul. So it looks like Turkey's retaliation isn't ending anytime soon. Certainly not. Into the early hours of Thursday morning, Turkey launched military fire against Syrian targets. This follows overnight operations in which the Turkey military continued to fire onto the Syrian side. Now, the whole incident was sparked when a mortar bomb was fired from Syria into Turkish territory. It hit a residential building, killing five members of the same family and injuring another 13. We don't yet have clear information as to who fired the mortar. We don't have exact information as to the extent of the Turkish retaliatory actions, but certainly this is intensifying the situation on the ground. The, we are receiving reports that a number of Syrians have been killed by the Turkish operations. And what we do expect later today, Thursday, is that the Turkish parliament will make a decision whether or not to authorize cross-border operations in the area. If indeed they give this the nod, what we will see is that the Turkish military can operate freely. Now, in the past, the Turkish military has moved into northern Iraq to root out their Turkish, sorry, Kurdish militants. And what some people are noticing is a parallel action where you're almost seeing now that Syria is moving into countries to deal with rebel fighters there. Turkey immediately banged on the doors at NATO and the UN. What's been the reaction there? Turkey certainly wasted no time in going on the defensive. It immediately contacted NATO as well as the United Nations. It called this an abominable act and has urged the international community for immediate action. Now, on Wednesday night, an emergency meeting of NATO was held in Brussels. The Syrians did issue an apology. They offered their condolences to the family, and both sides have called for restraint. At the same time, we do expect that the Turkish call for the United United Nations Security Council to meet immediately will be dealt with today. What we're hearing from the Turkish is that there needs to be immediate and urgent action to what they call Syrian aggression. So the situation on the ground quite fluid and it remains to see to be seen what happens in the coming hours. Absolutely. Artis Paula Slear reporting that live. Paula, many thanks indeed. And with Syria still locked in a civil war, the government says it's investigating the origins of the deadly attack on the Turkish village. But some experts in Turkey think the incident plays into the hands of some regional figures who are eager to see Ankara drawn into conflict with Syria. We only know that a mortar has been fired across the border. We don't know whether it's fired uh, deliberately or accidentally. We don't even know who fired it. There's been no proof that it was the Syrian army that fired it. It could be a provocation. I mean, no one really knows. There's been a steady increase in tension along that border for a long, long period of time. And, uh, you know, there's a, people have taken positions on this situation. And we also know there are very, um, there are many, uh, several governments which are anxious for Turkey to kind of take this kind of action. And Qatar is one, Saudi Arabia is another. So they will be weighing up the costs and the benefits tomorrow. Turkey's um, kind of policy on Syria is not popular inside this country. There's growing domestic opposition to the government's line on Syria. So I think that if the for the government to kind of kind of succumb to the temptation, perhaps, and uh, and and kind of uh, take part in some kind of um, operation across the border to create a no-fly zone, would be extremely unpopular inside Turkey. The exchange of fire on the Turkey-Syria border comes in the wake of a spate of terror attacks ripping through the conflict-torn country's largest city. Around 40 people have been reported killed and many more injured after a series of car bomb explosions in central Aleppo. The attacks took place in a government-controlled area and apparently targeted a nearby military and administration buildings. An al-Qaeda-linked rebel group has claimed responsibility for the attacks, which have become increasingly frequent across Syria.